welcome back everybody. Another fun video here at Blue Goal Electronics today. This one focused on the kind of infamous Lynn Sonder LP12 turntable. These things have been around for many, many years and, and are such a classic. They're a great looking turntable and they perform extremely well. Um, these things have been around since 1973 and one of the things I find so great about them is you'll notice you have a floating sub chassis with the arm board mounted to a, the same sub chassis as you do the platter here. And so um, very similar design to the um, AR the turntable and the AR um, XA and XB turntables that have been around. Um, since the early 60s. So uh, some people say that Lind kind of stole the idea from the old AR um, XA turntables, but um, and nonetheless, it's just a, um, you know, a, a nice design the way they've done this. But, but these turntables do have some issues uh, over time. And, um, I'm, and this one is facing one of those issues, so we're going to dive into that today. Um, these tables, uh, when they originally came, were only 33 RPM, so they only have an on and off button. And they did um, come with a potential little adapter that you could put on here to the pulley system to get them to play at 45 RPMs. And uh, some people do that and other people don't. Um, you can still get one of those adapters on eBay if you don't happen to have one. But if we notice when we turn this thing on... Um, it starts extremely, extremely slow, and then uh, I'll show you here in a second, but it never reaches 33 RPM. Okay, I thought I'd bring you over to my turntable here, which is very similar design here, as you notice the floating sub-suspension here. Um, but I've got a little app here on my iPhone called Turn Tabulator. And when you turn it on, you basically uh, tell it, hey, do you want to do 33 or 45 or auto? A uh, quick test, or uh, and then you tell it to spin. You drop this thing down on here. You basically turn your turntable on. It uses the little gyro sensor inside of the iPhone. Uh, it can take about 10 or 15 seconds. It's saying wait now. And eventually this thing will come up and say, hey, my table is spinning at 33.4 RPM, which is 0.2% fast. Um, and I can live with that. <laughs> Uh, they're locked in. It's exact. It's dead on at 33 RPM there. So, um, anyway, I just thought I'd show you how this app works on a working turntable. So I made a little list here of common issues with these types of turntables and what could possibly be causing this thing to start up slow and or never achieve 33 RPM uh, consistently. First issue, it could be a belt issue. I'm going to show you how to check for that. Second, it could be the lubrication of the platter here. Um, third, could be the uh, Vahelia power supply underneath this thing. And fourth, the hardest one to fix, hopefully it's not, would be the actual 24-pole uh, uh, motor itself. So let's dive in and figure out how to take a look and see if it's a belt issue. First and foremost, I would inspect the belt and make sure it's not sloppy. Uh, worn out, brittle. Uh, this one seems to be a decent new belt and uh, doesn't seem to be slipping as you uh, turn. If you notice as I turn the platter here, the inner platter, the motor seems to turn right with it. In other words, there's no kind of slippage going on between the two. I also like to check the actual um, um, pulley here and make sure that there's no build up on it. And one way you can do that, you can kind of take the belt itself off here and you can turn this unit on and get the uh, get the motor spinning. But if you'll notice, let me show you this again. Okay, we're zoomed in now on this motor. Watch this thing when I start it. You notice how it's spittering and sputting, kind of uh, not starting out consistently. If you'll notice, it's not even spinning consistently right now. I kind of, as I'm holding my finger on it, it's pulsing, da -da 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 -da, and it's not pulsing consistently. Um, so it's likely something uh, the motors, either the motor itself or the power supply feeding the motor. Hear it? It's uh, it's not it's not good at keeping good uh, consistent pressure there on the motor uh, or not, um, power to it feeding it properly. Okay, just in case uh, you know 
you're wanting to kind of follow the, the best practices. You can see how slow this thing is starting up here. But you put the outer platter on upside down so that you can get underneath here and look in and you actually watch the belt and you make sure that the belt is not slipping on either the platter or the pulley. And I can watch these here from the side and see that that's not the case. So now that we've kind of ruled out it's not the belt, uh, let's check the lubrication real quick. What we're going to do is remove the belt. We're actually going to pull the inner platter um, up and out. And you can see here on this thing, uh, the, the oil on it's got a little color to it. A um, little bit sticky, but you can tell it's not old oil or grease. Like If you had one of these tables that hadn't been touched in 20 or 30 years, a lot of times the, uh, the wheel well down inside of there will get um, all gunked up and... Um, and just turn to almost sludge. Uh, you can see this one's got some black grease. I'm definitely going to clean it out and lubricate it with some zero weight uh, synthetic motor oil. I'm also going to wipe off the inner um, platter spindle really well. And uh, as you can see here, some some brown oil, but you can see on these uh, here, I used about six of these total to get this thing cleaned out good. You know, the oil's uh, kind of black. Uh, shows it's got some age and some use to it, but it's, uh, it's definitely not gummy. Okay, a lot of guys sell this stuff and just get any either 5W or 0W30 uh, fully synthetic motor oil. A lot of guys will take a bottle of this. They buy these little bottles, needle bottles, for a dollar a piece online. They fill these uh, bottles up with this stuff and they sell these for $10 or $12 and so you make about $125 off of a, uh, a quart of uh, $6 oil. So uh, you know, a couple drops down inside here, put two or three, uh, put, put a little bit here on the spindle itself and uh, kind of work that in real well all the way around. Drop this thing back down in there after cleaning it out. And it is spinning a little more freely now than it was before, I will tell you that. Notice how this thing is uh, just free spinning at this point. Okay, despite um, checking the belt out good as well as lubricating the turntable, both of which are not a bad thing to do, and I would do both of those anytime you have one of these on the bench, uh, still not sinking or locking in at 33 RPM. So we've ruled out the belt issue, we've ruled out lubrication, now we're going to jump to the power supply next. To do that we kind of got to flip this thing up on its side or upside down. Okay, I pulled both the outer and the inner platter and belt off. Yeah, you pretty much have to otherwise they just drop freely. And uh, a lot of guys have fancy turntable jigs that they set their turntables up. Mine is uh, two pieces of 2x4 about uh, 20 inches long. And you can just see here on each side how they kind of sit. You just got to make sure that the tone arm is not hitting the table in any way, shape, or form. And then you can see this uh, power supply board right here. And these things are held in place by these little bitty white tabs right here. Which if you don't know how to remove them are a total pain in the you know what. But I'll show you a secret to them. So if you'll notice in my little set of uh, uh, WIA... Um, tools I have over here. One of these has a little X on the top of it <laughs> and that's because I use it all the time. It's a little uh, socket wrench and it's actually uh, 3.5 millimeters here if you read it on the side of it. And we'll come over here. And all you do is you use this little socket to push down on top of these things and it kind of pops them loose at that point because it squeezes both sides of them at the same time together and lets these things come off. So you just kind of work your way one at a time pushing them like that and uh, you'll eventually get to the other side here and uh, get it off. I'll show you. There we go. I didn't have the camera so you could see the other side of the board. But um, slowly you push these things and one at a time they will come loose from the board. Then you got the board. You do need to unplug this uh, little ribbon cable back here on the back side that goes into this connector. It just simply uh, plugs in right here, goes to the power switch, as well as you're going to want to kind of note the colors here. 
This goes blue, red, gray, gray, and it really doesn't matter which side the grays go on. But we're going to use a screwdriver to unloosen these four screws and pour these out, as well as two screws right here that'll take um, out the white and the black that uh, feed to the power cord. And once you get these out, and these out, and this little ribbon cable out, then it's just a matter of taking this board off, and we're going to move the table out of the way so we can use the bench to do some soldering on. I thought this was quite interesting. As I was removing one of the caps, the uh, end lead just came right out of it. I mean, like, no effort whatsoever. That thing just, um, as I was taking the capacitor out, kind of plopped out of there. So tells me this cap was completely dried out and gone. You can see underneath here how much it's had to uh, kind of burn on one side of it. Just heat coming off of these, uh, these resistors here, uh, kind of causing these things to get hot and dry out over time. As you can see, both these resistors here, that one's checking out at 14.95K, and this one is checking out at 14.96K. So they're spot on. They're 5% resistors, um, still in good shape here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, this uh, maybe replace this 0.33 right here because I've seen that one cause issues before. And outside of that, just get these caps back in it and... Uh, and see how it performs at that point. Okay, at this point we've replaced the three big 47 microfarad 250 volt capacitors. By the way, I measured these. Most of these were measuring um, the two that didn't have the end pulled out of it. Uh, we're me measuring about 34 microfarads instead of 47. So I've replaced all three of those. I've replaced the 10 microfarad at, um, I mean, sorry, 220 microfarad at 10 volts right here. And then I've got four more here, little ones that I want to replace. This is a 22 microfarad at 16 volts. Um, this is a 22 microfarad at 10 volt. So I'll just uh, grab a couple 22 microfarads, all of them at 16 volt. Um, you can't really go wrong going with a smart, a little bit larger. This one's actually a one microfarad at 50 volts. And this one here is a one microfarad at 50 volts. So. Two 22 microfarads at 16 and two 1 microfarads at 50. So we've got a bag of 22 microfarad at 25 volts. These are all Nikicon caps, uh, really good ones. And these are 1 microfarad at 50 volt, 105 degree Nikicon uh, uh, good caps. Okay, we've got the board done at this point, uh, recap wise. I'm going to leave these uh, poly caps in here for right now because they're much less likely to be subject than these electrolytics were. Let's power it up and see what we get. If we don't uh, solve our problem, we can always come back, measure more resistors, and measure and uh, replace these uh, film capacitors if needed. Okay, I've got it flipped over. I've got the inner platter put in. You can see it's spinning nice and freely. I want you to watch the motor as I turn it on. Thing spins right up now. That da -da 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 feeling I was getting earlier is completely gone. This thing's running right nice and sp smooth at this point. Let's get the belt on it. As you can see here, it's spinning nice and smoothly. There's no noise, no jumping sounds involved. Uh, let's get the outer platter on it. All right, you can see I got the inner platter on with the belt. Um, Things turning nice and smoothly. I'm not feeling any jerkiness. That's one thing you do. Just put your finger on the side of this little wheel, and if you feel it kind of j -j 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 jerking on you, you'll know that the power supply is not feeding uh, good, solid, consistent uh, pulses to this motor to keep it going. Things seems to be running smooth here. Let's drop the uh, the big outer platter on this thing at this point in time, and uh, get the slip mat over here on it. And let's hit the button 10,001, 10,002, 10,003, 10,004, 10,005. Five seconds is what it should take for your table to get up to full speed on this thing. Um, if it's taking you 10 or 12 seconds, you still got an issue. And so let's put this thing on the little Spin Me app again and drop it on here. I don't know how accurate this little thing is. It's limited to the gyroscope inside the the iPhone, but um, thing came back and said thank you, wait, and it popped up at 33 RPMs here, so uh, pretty happy with that. Um, 
you know, it's uh, it's within 0 0.01 percent <laughs> at this point in time. So, uh, and it seems to be solid too. There's no fluctuation in what's going on here. So I think this is, uh, I think it's in good shape. I'm gonna I'm gonna let this thing run solid, like just sitting over here like this. It's dead quiet too. I don't hear a thing. Uh, I don't hear any belt noise, any motor noise. This thing is just a dead quiet turntable. I'm going to let it run for an hour or two and just make sure that all the lubrication kind of uh, sets in well uh, on this thing, as well as that we don't have any heat or thermal issues with that board. But it was a pleasure to work on this thing. The guy that owns it uh, should be really proud of it here. And stay tuned. We're going to make a couple more videos while we're off here on the holiday break. So... Okay, I've been letting it run a couple hours now, and I tried a different little app. Uh, this is called RPM, and basically the center of the record turns green when it's within spec. It's running at 33.03, so 0 .090 uh, away from being absolutely perfect. Uh, in other words, well within spec, and you would never hear the difference. So at any rate, happy with how this thing's turned out. We're going to uh, get it uh, boxed back up and uh, get it back to the customer here soon. Thanks for watching, everybody.